you've been doing a bunch of seminars this weekend. I have. Uh, tell us about what the crowd's been like here. Why don't you pull up a little bit closer to that microphone? Is that better? You can hear your beautiful voice. Oh, I don't know if I have a beautiful voice, but uh, I, I, to be honest with you, it's my first year doing the seminars out here. Uh, I do a, a lot of reports, which is kind of easier when I'm at my house. And after charter, I'm kind of tired. I can just do it without thinking. Um, I took a little thought. I was blown away with how many people attended the uh, the seminars. It was kind of, uh, I ran out of chairs the first seminar. Yeah. I had a guy come in and said, uh, there's a standing room only. I said, we'll get you more chairs. I couldn't believe there was that many people. Um, but it, it's definitely, uh, it's nice to give back to the fishing community. Even if they don't charter with me, it's great to help the little guy out. And, you know, if I can increase their catch by one fish it's it's means a lot to me and you know i, I think it's a it definitely means a lot to them you know yeah. they don't get to do it as much as i do so i've seen a lot of fathers and sons which is awesome that's how i started up here and i got to take you out a few years ago with your dad and your son and that's they're my favorite trips you know and if, sometimes i can't get their father and son out but i know they're going out in their own boat if i can help them yeah i like it yeah yeah so i mean your seminar of course is going to be full but you walk through that hallway, even just regular people doing seminars, I and mean, then just the common seminar speakers, not the Casey Prisco Superman type oh, seminar speakers. Thanks, thanks, Pete. Those guys were, those guys are drawn. Like we walked through the rooms this afternoon, and like yeah, full room. So yeah. people are here to yeah. learn about how to catch more fishing or catch more fish. It's got to be exciting for people like us that work in this field, and and we're, and again, you're trying to make a living off people fishing with you but you're really a, a person who promotes fishing trying to get more people involved in the sport sure yeah i love it i uh I, I the more people that fish the better you know well you talked about the trip that uh, i took with my son and my dad uh we were we came to you uh, out in Pulaski, and that's why i wanted to talk a little bit with you about tonight before we get into the rest of the show is fishing that east end of lake ontario sure. Tell us about kind of how that, that side of the lake sets up for you. Right now, I mean, this has been such a, a crazy winter or crazy summer winter. It could, you know, it hasn't had much ice. Um, if we could get out there right now with the big boats, I mean, there's guys going little boats right now. They're, they're out there waiting. I mean, the conditions are good. The lake's a little warmer than normal. Um, I'm hoping to be in the water by March 1st, at least with the little boats, the bigger boats. I'm checking the weather every day. I'm thinking that first week I'm going to splash one or two of them for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'll have all four in right away, but definitely going to have two in pretty soon. By mid-March, it looks like it's going to be on. And uh, there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of browns out there from what I've seen. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I, I love being on the water. I love, I love seeing people catch fish. So I've been missing that out of my daily diet. So I'm, I'm going to go out there as soon as I can and have it happen. So you're kind of right out of Pulaski. You got Oswego just to the west of you. Yep. Um, talk about kind of how that season progresses through the year in that area. So I fish. Obviously, I start as soon as I can. March, April, we're going to fish Mexico Bay. A lot of structure there. A lot of creeks coming in. Pretty much the perfect storm for brown trout fishing. You have structure. You have creeks. You have dirty water. Um, it does get a lot of boat traffic, um, but we have a good population of browns that are there. And... Um, May, I take my boats out to Wilson, New York for the salmon bite. Um, this year, I have one of the guests coming here in a little bit, Russell Gahagan coming. Um, he's going to drive one of my boats for me and captain it. Um, he does salmon school, so he's actually going to do like a salmon school on the water. Uh, here's a shameless plug. I do have some dates open if you want to fish with Russell Gahagan or myself and Wilson. Um, look me up and get a hold of me on Facebook, or you can give me a call, 845-234-5024. That was shameless, huh? Sorry. We accept it. Yeah. Okay, cool. As long as you're in that's cool. Um, after I go out there for the salmon bite, I come back. And then it's brown trout, lake trout. Hopefully the salmon show up June is July. We fish salmon, Lakers, brown, steelhead, right on through until October. Pull the boats, hunt some pheasants, go to Key West, vacation some other places, back out to South Dakota, shoot some birds for Cooper, come do a podcast with Chris and Trevor, sports show out here get the boats ready and we do it all over again in 2024 right so life's good yeah life's good it, yeah. it could be worse so you brought up a one name in there cooper who's cooper cooper is my german short hair pointer that's not really a german short hair pointer by any characteristics of the dog breed um do not buy a german short hair pointer thinking it's going to act like cooper i don't know how why i'm blessed the dog is as good as he is he is He's my fishing buddy. He's my buddy at home. I, uh, it's funny. I go away for four days and I miss him. You know, it's, uh,
He's, uh, he's definitely, definitely my buddy. He uh, loves fishing on the boat. He loves seeing all the people. He looks for, for it every morning for 10 to 12 treats that he gets on the way out. Yeah. Afternoon charter after he does his business at the dock. 10, 12 more treats, nap time, maybe some scratches behind the ears. And uh, he just loves being on the boat with me. And I love having him on the boat. You know? and, and he goes everywhere with you. What everywhere. He? He's been we, uh... South Dakota. He went lobster fishing with me. I was fortunate enough to have uh, one of my charters where I was a lobster guy out in Maine, Friendship, Maine. And he brought me up and we fished lobsters. Cooper was on the lobster boat. And he was interested in the lobsters. But I had to I had to kind of like tell him no. And once I told him no, he was cool with it, you know, because they are their claws are free at the time until you put rubber bands on them. And he hung for the day on the lobster boat. And uh, I did find out that I could possibly get seasick. We went out and tuna fish the next day in between lobster fishing. And there was 45 mile an hour gale winds. And we were on a 48 foot custom lobster boat, and about 18 foot wide. And the guy goes, you get seasick. I'm like, nah, I think I'll be good. I haven't I've recently. my whole life yeah, on a boat. Yeah, I'm like, I'll hey, be, be good. It's dark, 2 a.m. We leave the dock and we're going out. and. We get past the islands, and I'm going to tell you, I had to get down to a T-shirt and get out of the cab. It's like being in a box, being shook around, and not being able to look at land or anything because there's nothing to stare at. It's dark. It was close. Cooper was enjoying treats. I was uh, holding my guts in to make sure it didn't happen. I was fortunate enough that the light came up, and I made it through. But, no, he's uh, he goes everywhere with me. I'd have him here, but he'd be all running around, and I couldn't keep an eye on him. Yeah. All right, let's answer. Uh, David's got a few questions here. I don't know if you want to get the top 10, but at least just give them a, a few. Uh, what's your top 10 flasher color combinations for meat and flies for summer kings? Uh, give them some stuff for five in the morning and then uh, change well, over with the summer. The bullfrog, obviously, by Oki. Uh, whitefish is an Oki attractor. Greenfish. Um, Dirty Goose Twinkies behind them. Atomic. Dirty Goose Twinkies. Atomic. 41 Twinkies or Stud Twinkies are good behind all three of those rigs. He also makes a white glow twinkie it's all white twinkies that glow with a white head um that'd probably be three of my rigs that are always in the, the water most of the year um as it gets a little brighter i might put some chrome stuff in the biggest thing i'd say is start with a mix and let the fish tell you what they want later in the season if i'm running flies um last year atomic the original hammer fly was really good uh 41 fly stud flies um Every day it's different. The water's different, but for the most part, if you're looking for a good atomic pack, he makes Dirty Goose's picks. It's actual package that's put together already with the flies that I like to use, and a lot of great captains use them. Um, look him up on his website, and you can actually purchase that from him. That'd be a really good start with uh, flies for Lake Ontario. And we'll have Tom on later on. He'll be uh, the last guest on tonight's segment, and you can kind of hear all about that. Uh, and Patrick Thayer, he wants to know uh, five Captain good Captain Pat. Yeah, he, he wants five good spoons for browns. Yeah. Well, Pat likes the blue whale. I don't think he wants to know what he likes. Oh, he wants to know what I like. like. I'm not telling him what to use. I'm I'm using on my boat. He's out there with my boats. Um, No, NBK, UV NBK, uh, Lance's Two Face, UV Green Glow LY, UV Can't Afford It, and Mongoose. I would say probably five really good spoons. They all have their right time. Sometimes first thing in the morning, the brights work. But Black Widow is another one. All stinger spoons, stinger size. I think Stinger's got the, the best spoons, honestly, when it comes to brown trout fishing. Um, that's all I use, really, for browns. All right. Questions coming in now. Here's one from Facebook. It's Rob Ferguson. Rob says, what rods do you recommend for a wire dipsy rod for someone with a small boat? Uh, use a normal dipsy rod, just replace the end with the roller or tip. What do you think about that? I like a 9-foot uh, medium Talora. I tend to put a tip on, and I'll use... Uh, 600 LC, new reel from uh, Dakota, newer style Dakota, or on my boat, I run the older style 700 LCs, line counter Dakotas, um, with 20 pound Malin wire. Um, if you're on a smaller boat, you can run 30 pound wire on it, but that's what I choose to use. I like Shimano. I, I, you know, I, I pro staff for Shimano. I like all their gear. It's never let me down. Um, so nine foot medium Talora with a twilly tip. So you know, we we kind of are talking about east east side of Lake on, Ontario. We've gone to Costa Rica. We've taken trips with the dog and everything too. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, you know once in a while you'll take a run up to Henderson as well. Sure, go chase Lakers. What's that all about? 
So on our end of the lake, we're fortunate enough to have a pretty pretty diverse fishery. You can go get browns. You can run offshore and find salmon. Um, our lake trout in Lake Ontario, and I'll probably catch some slack for this, but a lot of people don't give them as much credit as they deserve. They're smart fish. They're always on the bait, Chris. Um, and for some, they really like a sandy bottom. And we find that after May, those fish that we find normally out in front of our port migrate north 11 miles 12 miles up towards henderson um and they pile up up there and it's it's a pretty amazing fishery i mean the one spot we go is 22 miles but once you get there it's solid lakers for as long as you want and as many as you want you know it's uh that trip's a long trip you know if i ran that trip i've done it a few times you call it a marathon trip it's a 12-hour trip because you're spending an hour and 25 minutes hour and 30 minutes just getting there yeah. and once you get there you want to enjoy it it's not one of those things you want to end quick right you know it's uh it's over the rail as many as you want yeah it's what, fun what's what's that like for the clients they love it to be honest with you they love it most people you know they give lakers a bad name but i'm going to be honest with you there's a lot of times most people never caught a fish that's over five or ten pounds and they get the reel in an 18 20 pound lake trout it's awesome mm -hmm. it's awesome it's awesome for me and I think it's even more awesome for them. And uh, I like them. You know, I think the smaller ones are decent to eat. You know, the bigger ones, I like them smoked. I, uh, when COVID happened, I actually went out and we caught 15 salmon and we kept 15 lake trout over the course of a couple days. And I had them smoked. And I didn't tell my buddies about which fish was which. And I said, try the salmon. I smoked it. I told them I did it, which was a lie. But it was a good lie. <clears throat> they like the lake trout. Yeah. Nine out of ten like the lake trout. Yep. I think, I think the it's, Lakers are great for, for smoking. They're made yeah. for smoking. Yeah. That's what they're made for. They eat the same thing as salmon eats, you know. They're just fattier because they don't lose their 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 core or when they're going to spawn or, or chasing the you know temperature. They're happy all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's what the clients like. I, one of my favorite parts of fishing with you, I call it the Cooper's friend, is you know, you, you get to the dock and Cooper's gone, man. He's got to go find his favorite tree. Yep, he's uh, finding a tree, he's finding uh, a snake, a frog, a baby rabbit, anything. He loves the hunt. Um, but yeah, he uh, he's first one off the boat and he loves it. <laughs> After that 12 hour trip, man, he's he's probably got to go. Yeah, yeah, he um, he'll go on the boat occasionally if he has to go. You know, when he was younger, he had no problem doing that. Now he frowns upon. Like I can tell when he's ready to go and right. takes a little coaching because he thinks yeah. I'm gonna get mad. But yeah. we have a wash down hose and yeah. he's my buddy, so he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, I've seen it. it's okay, buddy. It's yeah, okay. it's okay, buddy. Just let yeah. it go. Yeah, here, let me show you how to do it. You know, I'll go right alongside of him. Right, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's uh he's the best dog anyone could ask for. He really is. He's uh he just easy. He gets it. Yeah, and he's a great tool for you. And you've told me this before. It's you know you're out there and you know even even Superman sometimes has a kryptonite kind of day, and he can keep morale up and keep everybody yeah. happy. And who doesn't love a dog? You know? Yeah, one little girl did it. That's one little girl out of I don't know how many. Yeah, Jackie. Yeah, well, silverback gorillas don't really like other animals. They don't even like themselves. You see what they do to their mates when they mate? Right. right. I mean, it's like caveman style. Like, they poof, over the head. Yep. You know, he's just, that's Rick, the silverback. It's, it's okay. He's getting, you know what? Since he's had a kid, yep. he's getting a lot easier in life. I've seen him with his kid the other day. He's mellow. Yep. He's mellowing out. But I think it's his wife. She wears the pants. Could she could be. kick his ass. Could be. Is that a bad word again? Let's save some of the barbs for Hajek. Okay, yeah, we'll wait here. for him. I'm going to burn him good. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, what are some things that, that you see, um, other than, than people touching the drag when they're reeling the fish in, um, that you think could help the average person catch more fish that you see when, when guys come on board your boat? I see a lot of people don't take, females are the best to have on a boat and kids. Kids can, can't, can't give you too much, they can't pull on it too hard. And this is gonna sound bad for the guys, but I'm gonna be honest, we have an ego. I've caught fish before. Don't tell me how to do it. I know what I'm doing. Well, they're pulling hard or they're bass, you know, the rod's over here to the left and right. They're bassing it. Um, I think some guys are too aggressive. The excitement gets in there and they're just too aggressive where, disclaimer, do not tell your wife or girlfriend what to do. Have your buddy do that. It goes way better than you saying, hey, you should do it this way. I've seen it. I watch, you know, they listen better to your friends or to the captain than they will from their husband or their boyfriend. So disclaimer, guys, let me coach or have your buddy coach. If you don't want me to coach, it's going to work out well for you. Way better than if you try coaching. Um, 
I think the biggest thing is, is just let the fish do its thing and it's not a rush. Enjoy the fight, keep constant pressure on them and most of those fish are gonna be landed. What's the secret to a successful net drop? Don't ever look the fish in the eye before he's not in the net. If you look the fish in the eye as you go to net him, he's gone. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's gonna get you. And you're gonna see that fish. The rest of the day, that night, next couple nights, I still see some fish that got away, Chris. There's a reason they call it shark eyes, right? I'm telling you. I'm telling you, do not stare him in the eye. That's the first thing. Um, and don't ever scoop a fish before he's ready, you know? Mm -hmm. Make sure they're ready. Don't force the net job. You can. I mean, you look like a hero if you force it, but mm -hmm. you can look like a zero if you force it and miss. Give them time to yeah, do their thing. Yeah, work the thing and work it out, you know?